Hey everyone, this is Ryan, and today we're going to talk about the plasma membrane and specifically transmembrane receptors. So here we have a plasma membrane with two layers of phospholipids, and their hydrophobic tails are in the center of this layer. Of course, we'll have other lipid molecules like cholesterol that provides rigidity and glycolipids that look similar to the phospholipids, except they have sugar moieties on their phosphate heads. In addition to lipids, we have protein molecules like the transmembrane integral receptors or integral proteins that you see here and also peripheral proteins that will sit on either the cytoplasmic face or the extracellular face of the phospholipid bilayer. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about how receptors in a cell work. So if we're thinking about small hydrophobic molecules like urea or a steroid hormone like aldosterone or maybe some gases like O2 and CO2, these are all examples of molecules that have no trouble diffusing right through the plasma membrane and because they can do that, they can interact with an intracellular receptor that typically functions as a transcription factor to act on DNA sequences. Now the only condition to think about here is that these molecules can only diffuse across the membrane if they're going from a high concentration to a low concentration or down its concentration gradient. And because this, is, this simple diffusion is an example of passive transport, that means that no energy would be involved in this process. Now if we change gears and think about a hydrophilic molecule, those hydrophilic molecules cannot penetrate the plasma membrane because of this hydrophobic center. So a hydrophilic molecule could be something as simple as an ion like sodium or chloride or any number of uh, water-soluble hormones like insulin. Now these molecules can interact only with the extracellular side of the phospholipid bilayer. And so the cell has designed these transmembrane receptors that can receive these signals from the extracellular side, undergo a conformational change, and then send the signal to the cytoplasmic side where it can interact with the inside of the cell. So there are four main classes of transmembrane receptors that I want to talk about. And we'll just go through one at a time. So the first one is called an ionotropic receptor. Ionotropic. And so this ionotropic receptor works exactly like a ligand gated ion channel. And in fact, that's how you should think of it. Because a ligand will bind to this receptor. And in doing so, the receptor will undergo a conformational change through which ions can pass through inside the cell. Now the second one is part of a class of receptors that are called metabotropic receptors. And we'll start with the RTK or receptor tyrosine kinase. And in this case, we usually have insulin as the ligand. And when insulin binds to a receptor tyrosine kinase, there is no ion channel, but there is an enzymatic activity on the cytoplasmic side. And it will be a tyrosine kinase. So that's how it gets its name. It has a receptor side, and then it has the tyrosine kinase side. And when the tyrosine kinase is activated, it will autophosphorylate or phosphorylate itself and then other proteins will be attracted to this autophosphorylation 
which will cause a whole chain of other events to occur within the cell. And this is how metabotropic receptors work. They receive a signal and then they initiate a biochemical cascade within the cell. Now the third receptor that we'll talk about is also a metabotropic receptor and we'll call it a jack receptor. Now it's very similar to the receptor tyrosine kinase except it doesn't have an enzyme as part of the receptor. So this whole protein is simply a receptor but it hijacks a jack kinase which is a cytoplasmic protein which will take the role of sort of the tyrosine kinase of the receptor that we just talked about and it will initiate a biochemical cascade within the cell. And the last receptor that we will talk about is one that we're all very familiar with, a G protein coupled receptor. And this would also be considered one of the metabotropic receptors. So we have another ligand, another hydrophilic ligand, that can't penetrate the plasma membrane, so it binds to the extracellular region of this receptor, this transmembrane receptor. And when it does so, instead of a jack kinase in the cell, it has this G protein that's probably located more within, embedded within the plasma membrane. And this G protein is a heterotrimeric protein. It has three different subunits called the alpha, beta, and gamma subunits. Now the alpha subunit typically binds with GDP, but when the receptor is turned on by activation by a ligand, the alpha subunit prefers to bind with GTP. And when it does so, the alpha subunit doesn't want to associate with the rest of the G protein. It would rather chill out with this adenyl cyclase. So it moves over and associates with the adenyl cyclase, which is an effector protein. This effector protein as I mentioned, it could be adenyl cyclase. It could also be phospholipase C, or any. Other, there are a couple other ones, but these are the two most common. And these effector proteins will likely convert ATP to cyclic AMP, which is a secondary messenger, which will again initiate a biochemical response within the cell. And the upside to a receptor like this is that one ligand and one receptor can lead to several secondary messengers which causes a signal amplification. And that about covers it for all the four classes of transmembrane receptors. So I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you all next time.